Our guest in this segment is Joe Burton. Joe is the director of uh, Parks and Recreation in, in uh, Berkeley County, a position that Steve Catlett held for so, so very long. And uh, Joe would be, I think, the third director since Steve retired. Joe, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Uh, we are familiar with you from appearance that you had made uh, before the election in regards to the, uh, was it the excess levy, the bond? It was the bond. The bond, mm -hmm. yeah, at that time. Uh, what were you doing before you were the Parks and Rec director? So I worked for Berkeley County Schools. I was director of maintenance and operations there. Mm-hmm and did a lot of work to help the school bond get passed. Yeah, which you did, congratulations. Yeah, you must you. have been great on the radio that day. <laughs> well, that was probably what pushed it over the edge. I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, effective yeah. communications is important, Bill. Yeah, well, and he was, I remember that very uh, very clearly, and you were very very effective in the way getting the message across. I think you also talked to some degree of uh, hardening the schools as well, the security associated with the schools, and that was tied yeah, into sir, the school. That was, that was a big part of the bond for yeah, sure. Yeah. Obviously, that's very important, and we need to do even more yeah. uh, everywhere Exactly uh, for that, obviously. Uh, what made you interested in the Parks and Rec position, Joe? Well, I tell you, I think it, it took some of my career experience and some of my, my passions and brought it all together. Uh, I definitely want to work where I live, and it's important to me to do everything we can to, to make our community better. So when someone brought it to my attention that the, this was a, a job opening i was very interested i'm an avid outdoorsman i've been a, a youth sports coach for way too many years <laughs> and a, a big user I've, I've got a big family so i've been a big user of martinsburg berkeley county parks and rec services throughout my my time here uh, so that i felt like this fit me really well uh, my background in, in operations and management lends itself to to this position for sure one of my uh, listeners slash viewers said you also built a nice addition on their old house. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. So good work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's also good to know when everything, a new pavilion needs yeah. built. Joe just yeah. takes out the hammer, a couple of nails, done. Hey, whatever has to be done, right? right. you got to do it. Uh, Joe, were you re uh, involved at all with the reassessment of Lambert Field, the pool there? Lambert Park, you mean? Lambert Park, yeah. Because we heard at one time going to have to tear it out and build a new one. Now we're saying there it can be fixed with minimum cost. Were you involved with that? I wasn't in, involved in the assessment. As I came in, I just started in January, mm -hmm. so that, that was well underway. I've been involved in the execution for sure uh, since that time. So I, I think there's, you know, a, a, obviously a long history there, but uh, the pool is, has a lot of years on it and certainly needs a lot of work so i don't think that was ever a question of can we make repairs that makes it as good as new and we'll use it for another lifetime i think the question was uh could there be repairs made that would help lambert pool get through the next several years while work continues on planning for a new facility in the future i heard a discussion um joe uh couple or so weeks ago at the Martinsburg Rotary Club um, presentation by I believe she was the director of the Y the YMCA um, in the Frederick area and she talked um, very optimistically um, about building of a Y here and wanted to hear your take on that is that something then that that would be a project that parks and rec would be involved in um have you heard about that what what's happening on that front I, i've been fortunate to be involved in a couple meetings about that uh those discussions and i think like so many things we do where there's so many partners in our community and there's not one entity that can do everything so the discussion with the why that they've talked a lot about possibly an indoor pool or aquatic facility in our in the panhandle and we know i mean that's been a discussion that's gone on for 30 years the the need for that and i've I sat on a committee <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i've experienced myself times. i've had uh all my kids have had to travel to shepherd and many times late at night for practices and i see how our our county schools have had to had juggle such a, a small space and that's that's a challenge so i think a, an indoor facility is a tremendous need for sure uh that's not something currently that parks and rec could manage at all it, it's a, a huge undertaking 
uh, pools lose money. I'm not sure if people are <laughs> familiar with that. She said that too. Pools, yeah. pools lose money. So, and and putting a, an indoor facility over that pool makes it even more challenging. So it would not replace the, the community's need for facilities like Lambert Pool and War Memorial Pool, those community pools and, you know, the splash pad that we have planned for south for the south end in the future all those things are still going to be needed by the community but addition of you know a new partner coming on the scene in addition of a, an indoor facility that would just just make it all better well and interestingly because we talked in the previous segment two ago um, about the need for child care and apparently the y is highly involved in child care programs in the frederick county maryland um, uh, area and uh, the person who spoke to us said that this would be a focus here as well which would be great so Absolutely. and when you say a focus I keep hearing the why both Berkeley and Jefferson mm -hmm. and so I'm not sure if that's sorted out where it would be if it's just Eastern Panhandle itself that would be yeah exactly up. and I think there has been talk sort of behind Martin's Landing, lots of talk with a um, uh, with a partnership with the hospital, yep, WVU yep. Medicine, um, who owns that land behind um, behind Martin's Landing there. So that was one location. But again, I think it's very early stages. You, Joe, probably know better than it, that. It's very early. Mm -hmm. right? So there's been some good discussion, a lot of people supporting that initiative but nothing concrete yet mm -hmm. since since one january uh joe you've probably been faced with many challenges has one stood up above the others that you that surprised you as being a, a real challenge and you can't say coming up on this show and listening to bill ask a question it doesn't count <laughs> as a challenge it's not a challenge it's softball as john gilstrap once accused why me are you so popular governor <laughs> yeah. it's all context rob <laughs> and gilstrap totally missed the context that day <laughs> <laughs> that man so i think the the easy short answer is the pools are a yeah. huge challenge mm -hmm. uh getting lambert pool open for business this year was a top priority so it was all hands on deck to, to make that happen Th the bigger answer is getting a feel for where we are in today in 2024 with parks and rec and it has it has changed so much in recent years and as rob mentioned we've had several different directors in that time which doesn't make it any easier so taking a quick look at where are we what is the state of all our facilities what policies and procedures do we have in place to keep these facilities running what are our current staffing levels and, and what's our use rate and and that's been something that it's just shocked me it's I, it's great to see people out there using our parks, but the numbers are just unbelievable. Uh, and we have to make adjustments and prepare for the future. So that's Unbelievably been, high, you mean, Joe? Yes, the, okay. super high use rate. I, I, I said in our board meeting the other day, I, I went through War Memorial Park on a random Saturday afternoon, and you could not have parked a car in that park anywhere and i'm not talking about parking spaces i mean there wasn't an available patch of grass to put your car there were cars down north tennessee down uh memorial park drive what was the purpose what you said a random saturday morning what what it, was happening it was just a saturday just afternoon, saturday. Oh, saturday afternoon. That's, that's just all it was. So, there's nothing special. so it wasn't it was, a car show it, it, or it, there, there was an okay. event there that there there always is every weekend there, there was a church event happening all of our pavilions are booked yeah. for parties and events er, yeah. every weekend all the playing surfaces, the basketball court, the pickleball and tennis courts are covered up. The pool had hundreds of people in the water. It, there was a thousand people in the park at, at that moment. And it was just a little snapshot, but that's happening all the time in, in all of our parks. And that's, a, and that's a great thing, Joe. And I know yeah. you love that as a director, but I think it also reinforces the point that you need more revenue. And you've, you've got to find a secure way to raise revenue. And it can't just always be user fees. Right, we are raising our standards. We, we want, the parks to look great every time you walk in. We want them to be safe and clean and ready to use, and that takes a lot of manpower. When you have a thousand people in a small area on a Saturday, it's a full-time job to keep those bathrooms clean, to keep trash emptied, 
and to keep everything working the way it's supposed to keep people safe that's right Right. yeah joe have you found any difficulty in navigating the (coughs) huge shadow that steve catlett has left i i I won't even try to compare myself obviously i mean those are huge shoes to fill i think steve obviously steve did an amazing job over the years he he had to grow that park system with our community over what almost 40 years right 37 years and if i, I get interrupt with relative speaking with very little money from the state compared to other parks and recs so most everything steve did he generated found the money himself absolutely yeah. and uh that's something that we want to continue on you know we want to be advocates for ourselves we want to generate our, our own money and we we do parks and rec i've tried to as i talk to different groups do a little bit of educating about how do we work because we are kind of a a strange entity that lives in between all these other groups and we receive you know about 15 percent of our funding comes from the city and about 15 percent from the county and the board of ed contributes a, a small percentage through the through the levy grants fluctuate every year depending on what grants come in the the rest the the biggest part of our revenue is self-generated and when you think about all the programs that we do that are free you know we have 18 parks that you can go to anytime you want that are many many acres and take a lot of manpower and time to keep those areas safe that's all 100 percent free so that's a challenge you know the the things that we have that produce revenue and i won't say profit i'll say revenue are admissions and leagues and programs that we charge for pool admissions etc concessions uh, so it's a challenge to look at how do we do that efficiently and get the most we can out of it while keeping everything very affordable to the community. Joe Burton, our guest here on the program since January. He's been the executive director of Berkeley County Parks and Recreation. And Joe, the county, in the form of the commissioners, when they've come on this program, have made clear that they would like home rules so they could establish a 1% sales tax and that 1% sales tax would be used to fund emergency services, parks and rec, and such. When you look at your budget and what's necessary, especially with the expansion of the park system that's undergoing in the south end of the county and the north end as well with your master plans, how much additional revenue do you project that you will need from your current budget? I don't know that I'm prepared to throw a number out at that. I think we have to look at expansion and projects you know capital improvements are one thing it's maintaining those projects that will be a big impact on us going forward so i think in the public sector everywhere you get these one-time sources of money to build great new facilities and the challenge is those new facilities now take more employees Mm -hmm. to to run and and just more dollars period in in every way in in equipment and materials etc etc so if you look at that master plan and how much we could possibly expand over the next 10 years it would it would mean doubling our current workforce uh, at least of full-time employees to manage that much property and and that that many programs how many employees do you have now that are full-time right now we only have 20 full-time employees so you would need to go up to roughly 40. what's your annual budget about about roughly half of that is maintenance and custodial services mm-hmm. which that part was would definitely need to grow which means you need to buy additional equipment as well absolutely uh, we've got a, a fleet of vehicles right now that needs some attention and then that would just be expanding what's your annual budget our operating budget is a little over three million dollars right now and do you have a capital budget you also go by uh, we have some reserves that we set aside a percentage for capital improvements each year that's a relatively small amount we're usually looking for uh, grants or or help from the county and city for capital improvements steve was uh, steve was instrumental in getting i think one half of the hotel motel tax being directed toward parks and rec which was a major major contribution to their funding source and i think is growing because if you try to get a hotel room around here lately the rooms always seem to be booked well we definitely rely heavily on that unfortunately it has been down it has been and uh I i think the 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 thinking there is that airbnbs have really dropped off which they were getting that part of that tax and since COVID has faded away and the need for travel nurses and temporary staffing has faded away those airbnb dollars have also stepped back i didn't know you got the airbnb money as well Mm -hmm. 
And you, um, you receive, you, you pointed out, you receive about 15% from the city, 15% from the county. Now, was your budget impacted? I know the, the county did a little bit of, um, of trimming this past year. Was your funding intact? Did you get what you asked for? Well, the largest part of that is the hotel motel okay. tax. So that that hasn't changed the percentage hasn't changed of course that fluctuates up and down mm -hmm. but that hasn't changed uh we, we did ask for some funds that they weren't able to fund 100 percent. so there was there was a small reduction there but I'll, I'll say you know the county does everything they can to to continue funding our programs and in in any of the new measures they've talked about like you've talked about the one one percent tax or uh, the impact fees that have been discussed. It, there's always a discussion about parks and rec and quality of life initiatives. And you, you, you mentioned the pools being sort of high on the list of um, things that maybe keep you up at night. I know the city was highly involved in, specifically the mayor was highly involved in the Lambert pool piece. And there was additional funding that came from the city for that project as well the city funded that project and did a lot of the initial work on that uh, they use you know cc engineers do a lot of work for the city and they were working on getting those assessments done and funding that project uh, the city is, has been wonderful to work with they recently gave us some funding for uh, some roof repairs to the berkeley 2000 complex that were very much needed and they've also allocated some funds for paving improvements at, at that complex. But, uh, but I feel very fortunate that I have a board that is 100% supportive and the city and the county that are, are, are trying to push our whole community forward and improve all these quality of life uh, features that, that we manage every day. A couple of years ago, there was a push to separate the county parks and rec from the city parks and rec uh i assume that discussion is is dead or you've heard or is it still around i've only heard casual comments of that uh i think i don't know that i have an opinion about that uh, to, be, to be honest with you it's we do have a unique structure right now it's working and there's so much overlap yeah. it, it would it would be difficult to to separate those two at this point i think Where's your, you mentioned expansion, Joe, and potentially needing to double the workforce if it all comes through. Where is the majority of the expansion taking place, uh, parks-wise? Well, I mean, we have plans for a big expansion at Poor House, which is in the kid, which is in the county, and uh, the South Berkeley Park, which is also in the county. I think you guys added acreage to that park recently, did you not? Right, and then uh, it, w when that is built out, that's going to be a big park with a lot of features in it that will definitely take resources. And then all the initiatives in the city right now with the green, the greenway project being potential, the development of Lake Thomas as a park, that's also going to be a, a big impact. So it, Indeed. I, I don't, well, isn't it nice to know, though, that Maria is taking care of the bathrooms for Lake Thomas? <laughs> At Lake Thomas. <laughs> yeah. My backyard. Yeah. Thank you. What is planned for Lake Thomas besides <laughs> Maria opening up her home? For <laughs> and she's doing the snack bar, too, by the way, in her kitchen. Yeah, there you go. Well, what, what are the, seriously, what are the plans for Lake Thomas? I, I mean, at this point, it's completely in the concept phase. Uh, there are some great ideas to be able to uh, initially just access the property uh, to create some walking trails and some passive park activities like just some 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 seating and pavilions and uh, walkway around it the next phase would be what can we do with the lake itself you know once we do our homework we determine that the shoreline is safe can we have boater access fishing etc uh, it would be a fantastic facility right there in the middle of town take your time <laughs> Got about, I'm just uh, kidding. I'm about kidding. A minute and a half left, Joe. Plans for the north end of the county. So we have Spring Mills Community Park, which is under construction right now, which is a small park right on the corner of St. Andrews Drive. And it, it's coming along. Uh, actually, this past week, they've been working on utility lines coming in. We've got a playground package being delivered in the next four weeks, a pavilion package coming after that. Our goal is to get that park open and usable early fall uh, this year so we're pretty excited to, to add that uh, we've also been looking at dupont which gets used heavily for our soccer programs and some other programs and looking at what could we do to improve that facility and 
and hold up to the heavy use. 30 seconds, 4th of July. I know you folks don't do the fireworks, but otherwise, in terms of what you're opening an operation for? Really busy weekend for pavilion rentals and, and, and everything in the parks. How do you rent a pavilion? You can do it on our website. Uh, there's a there's a tab for pavilion rentals on there, and they do get bu booked up pretty early, so it's a good idea. At this point, you're looking at next year, honestly. So, Bill, sorry. <laughs> you waited too long. I waited too long. All right, Joe, uh, just to have one final question for you. Uh, how was it interpreting Bill's questions? Were you able to uh, handle it uh, perfectly? He was kind. Yeah, uh, very kind. Definitely softball. S softball, that. yeah, yeah, that's right. Appreciate it. Just that. don't tell John Gilstrap that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Joe, good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, and uh, we hope to see you again as the uh, summer continues. Have a great 4th of July, everybody, and, and such, and uh, swim a lot, too. Stay cool.